Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the malware threats. Malware threats can be classified under IT threats, computer threats, or cybersecurity threats. Malware is a short for malicious, a bad software. Simply put, it's an umbrella term. It's an umbrella name that refers to any software designed to damage, exploit, or harm your computer or computer system, obviously without your consent. A malware can be introduced into the system through various methods like email attachments. Someone downloads an attachment from an email, they, they download the software, or you visit a website that, that's, that's malicious. The main objective can vary from data theft and unauthorized data access to system disruption or using the compromised system as a, as a base to attack others, which is called the botnet. There are seven common type of malware. There might be others. But this, those are seven common type. This is what you basically need to know for the CPA exam. In this session, we will discuss those seven types. Virus, worms, Trojan horse, ransomware, spyware, adware, logic bomb. And what we do is we look at some common controls that's going to help them. Let's go ahead and get started by discussing virus. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. What is a virus? It's a malicious software that attached to legitimate files. It needs a host or programs to execute malicious action. A famous virus is called I Love You. There's many of them. This was a famous one. It's similar to a biological virus. That's why it's called a virus because it's self-replicate, but it needs a host. It needs to be attached to a file or a program for it to replicate. And it could spread through the system. Viruses can have various objectives. It could be a simple prank, someone trying to give you a message, just a funny message, or stealing data, damaging files, or rendering the system not operatable. What are some common controls for viruses? Now, some of the controls that we mentioned, they repeat themselves in many controls and many uh, in, on many threats. That's fine. For example, educate the users, having an antivirus software, having a firewall for your network, so on and so forth. The first defense is having an antivirus software that's up to, up to date and regularly up to date. As I told you, the virus is like a human virus. It means they what? It means they, it mutate, it change its form. There's new viruses introduced every day. Therefore, the software will need to be updated so often on daily basis. Implement application whitelisting to only allow pre-approved pre software software to run simply put there are certain software you cannot download they're kind of uh just not allowed and obviously educate employees about the risk of downloading and opening unknown emails or software again you'll see that educating employees is a control for every threat worms worms spread across computer without a human intervention the coin thicker worm exploit weaknesses in the windows os to create a botnet and spread to millions of computers. What is a botnet? Botnet is when the when the worm take over your computer and it uses your computer to attack others. Unlike viruses, they are standalone software and can be replicated independently across networks. So they don't need a host. Their primary purpose is to often consume system resources, which slow down or crash the system, but they can also contain malicious payloads. How do you control for those? Again, having a regular regularly patch and update the operating system make sure your system does not accept worms and applications as well deploy intrusion detection prevention system ids and ipss to monitor network traffic if you see something unusual it will be detected and isolate infected system once identified from network to prevent the spread and obviously educate the users the third Malware is a Trojans or Trojan horses. I hopefully we all know what a Trojan horse is. It appears as a legitimate software, but perform malicious actions once executed. So simply put, it looks like a normal software that you can be used, can be used. Then what you do is once you open it, 
that will perform malicious action. Just where, where is the naming coming from? A Trojan horse. It comes from the Greek mythology where the Greek used a large wooden horse to do the what? To infiltrate the city of Troy. So basically they surrounded the city of Troy, but they could not invade it. So what they did is they built this wooden horse, they hid inside of it, and the people of Troy, the soldiers, brought the horse inside their walls. This is why it's called a Trojan horse. That's the term. Unlike viruses and worms, they do not replicate, but they can be just as destructive. What are some of the common controls? Well, you want to use updated virus system and anti-malware solution. Avoid downloading software from untrusted sources, because this is how you introduce the Trojan horse. And implement strict user permission and least privilege principle. So people should have access to only what they need to have access to. This is what we mean by that. Ransomware. Well, basically, it encrypts the victim's data and demand payment, oftentimes in cryptocurrency, because it's not traceable. Law enforcement cannot trace it. So what they do, they take over your system, they lock it and say, pay me money. And that money usually in cryptocurrency, again, so you cannot trace how they, you know, when they receive it, you don't know who they are. Example is the WannaCry ransomware. There's many of them. What are some of the common controls? Again, maintain regular backups and store them offline or in a disconnected environment. Because if they take over your system, that's fine. If you have a backup, there's nothing you can do. You don't want to pay them. They have access to it. You, at least you have a backup. But there's a risk of them spreading that information. But again, having the backup, at least you can keep going with your system. Keep your system updated and patch any vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities in the system. Use email filtering solution to block malicious attachments and links and restrict user privileges. Not every users need admin right. By restricting these, even if a rans ransomware enters a system, it may not gain permission to it because maybe it access someone that have limited privilege. Therefore, it's restricted. Five, spyware. Well, as the word suggests, spy, spyware, spying on you. It collects data from your computer using users without their knowledge. For example, one of them is Keylogger, where they kind of trace your what you are typing on your computer in this way to gain access to your login and password. The primary intention is to monitor and report on your activities, making a significant concern about regarding privacy and security. One spyware known sp spyware is called Cool Web Search. It's redirect web searches to advertisement, collect personal data, and it's challenging to remove. What are some of the controls? Deploy anti-spyware solution software and update them on a regular basis. Educate the users about the dangers of downloading software from untrusted sources. Implement browser security setting and use security extension. Add some extensions that's going to prevent those spywares. Adware, very similar but di different. Adware is ad, trying to advertise. Display unwanted advertisement while not always malicious. Sometimes it's not malicious, just simply want you to know about their product, they're trying to advertise someone's product because they pay them, but they can degrade system performance, impede user's experience, and sometimes violate user privacy. An example of it is something called Gator, also known as Claria, an adware that delivers targeted ads to users but was bundled with spyware. So sometimes they come together hand in hand. Some of the controls that you can use is utilizing ad blockers on browsers. So for example, you could implement ad blockers where that's it, you cannot have any adware in installed on your system. They're called the blockers. Employ web filtering solution to block access to known adware hosting sites. Every time an adware hosting site is identified, that's it. You list it, you block it, you don't let your employee access that. On a regular basis, clean and maintain the system, possibly with specialized ad adware removal tools. Every once in a while, scan the system, make sure nothing is hitting. And before installing specially free software, Read the end user license agreement to ensure what? There is no adware included in that, especially when it's free. The reason it's free because is they are going to add an adware to your system or a spyware. And ensure all software, especially your web browsers, are up to date to protect against potential vulnerabilities. And install software only from trusted sources and by all means educate the users. Logic Bomb type of malicious software or a piece of code that's triggered by a specific event, condition, or timing. So something happened, that logic bomb is, is executed. Once that event 
occur or the condition is met the logic bomb the logic bomb activates and executes its malicious payload whatever that payload is a common a common example to help you understand this is an employee revenge for example an employee what they would do is if i'm terminated once my account in the software once my hr account is inactive they it will trigger a software it's called the logic bomb that destroy the hr system or destroy the payroll record logic bomb can delete data can be programmed to delete critical system files or other data system disruption can disrupt the system can cause the system to crash malicious action this could include introducing other malware changing data or other unauthorized system behavior so obviously one of the one of the backup here the controls is to have a backup right you can make sure you have a backup also you want to implement strong access controls to prevent unauthorized code modification you don't let anyone have any code modification we're going to have a whole few lectures about how change management when you want to change the code you have to go through some internal control procedures on a regular basis audit and review system and application codes for any anomaly something unusual because this is where it could be hitting the logic bomb utilize specialized specialized detection tools that can identify hidden or suspicious triggers and payloads what i'm going to do now i'm going to go over some overall detection and prevention that could basically apply to all you just want to make sure you are familiar with them so on the exam you might have to identify a control with a threat for example antivirus and anti-malware software make sure they're always up to date why because the threat is constantly changing that's why they have to be stay up to date so we'll be able to detect and remove known threats and you want to use a multi-layer defense which is don't use one line of defense multiple line of defense you want to have an antivirus you want to have a network firewalls to block unauthorized access and prevent worms from entering a network or spreading if they are already inside three software patches on a regular basis update all software especially operating system and key applications many worms exploit those known weaknesses to keep the software patched keeping the software up to date will prevent those exploitation introduction and in, intrusion detection system detect unusual activity on a network potentially identifying the, the presence of a worm a virus or anything else email filtering since many worms spread via email blocking or filtering certain types of attachment can limit this obviously users education about all the threats train users not to open unexpected or suspicious emails or download untrusted attachment even if they come from known contact sometimes it's a known contact that's why they try to trick you and we'll talk about phishing in another session network segregation what you should do split the network into sub network so if a worm or a virus is in one place it does not spread because the network are kind of basically disconnected not disconnected but they're sub network so it doesn't go throughout the whole system again although those detections and preventions i mentioned here worms but they can be applied to many other malware threats let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from farhat lectures that deals with malware threats what type of malware could potentially be responsible for tech nova corporations employee receiving a barrage of unsolicited advertisement on their company laptops is it ransomware what is a ransomware ransomware is when the person making the attack lock your data and demand payment those ransomware don't show any ads they're not interested in ad they're interested in money and specifically cryptocurrency so it's not ra ransomware is it adware well it's showing advertising it could be adware but let's take a look at the other one c c is a worm is this a worm well worm spreads across computers without a human intervention but also they're not interested in ads so c is out is it a virus or is it an adware what's a virus virus attach itself to a legitimate file because it needs a host to execute malicious action again they're not as interested in ads so indeed adware adware is the term that we are looking for here and this is what you will need to know for the cpa exam that the various terms they might put them in a business scenario and you'll need to identify which threat am i dealing with and when you identify which threat you want to identify what's the best defense for that threat what should you do now go to farhat lectures and look at additional mcqs that's going to help you understand the malware threats which is an it threat cybersecurity threat computer threat there are other 
IT, security, and malware threat. We'll look at them in separate recording. Good luck, everyone. Invest in yourself, whether you are an accounting student or a CPA exam candidate or studying for your accounting, some sort of an accounting profession like a CMA. Good luck and stay safe.